In this episode, Brittany Faith Turner drops absolute fire. A real banger of an episode as she goes over ways to increase the value of your home and we continue with the nine types of homes not to buy. All right, Brittany, we're back. And we're back. We're still doing it. We are cliffhanging pros. We're like Sylvester Sloan you know, of podcasting. People hate it, but they keep listening. <laughs> you just crushed four out of the nine. Four out of the nine. Five left. I'm begging you. Please tell me what are the other ones. The nine types of Number houses. Number five. Okay. We've got uh, don't ever buy a two-bedroom, one-bath. Ever. Don't do it. What? Don't do it. Hold on. People don't want it. Two beds, one bath. Don't do it. Yeah. Obviously, you can still sell it, but usually anything under a thousand square feet, people don't want it. People want a third bedroom. They don't like sharing that bathroom with their kids or their guests. They want to have their junk out. If you're going to do a two one, then maybe rent it. But even rentals are like those houses sit, 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 sit. They just do. So the magic formula is three bedroom, two bath minimum. Yeah. Three, two. Three, two minimum. Mm. That is the thing. Now, when I've bought two ones in the past, it's because they were big enough to or, add one, right? To make some weird space into a bedroom. Okay. And or an additional bathroom. But if you cannot add it, again, you're going to struggle. And now, when you buy it, we're talking about the two one. Did you, you didn't take a three bed, one bath, right? You, you no. found a way to add both. I mean, again, all things can be done, but you are going to have to heavily discount it and you're going to be the last one sold ever. Just so mm. your house is going to sit, 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 mm. um, even with the heavy discount because people just are not interested in that mix. Yeah. Well, I mean, so tell me the one that you did that on to find that out. What was that? Oh, gosh. Because you bought a 2 one. I mean, that's all of these things of the do not yeah, use. Paulie told me not to do that in the beginning. He, yeah. he said not to. So we bought one on Mainer Avenue. And <laughs> and again. It's like the transition. Uh, Listen, he said not he to. He said not to. So but we was, bought one on Mainer Avenue. Again, It's they're always going to look like the best deals. Yeah. So it's $48,000. And it was a two one and it had some weird second living room and we were able to convert it. But we had to end up knocking down like five walls just to try to fit a master bath in there. And then the rest of the bedrooms and the living room all shared that second bath. So that was hard because mm -hmm. it ended up when we ran our numbers, we just didn't account for how many walls we're going to have to knock down to steal some space from this room and add this sure. one to then do the plumbing. And it just ended up more expensive. But right. we did it. It was possible, and I still have never bought one I couldn't convert because I just know better. I've been trained better, and that's the power of mentoring. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's a 0% chance that I would be in this if it wasn't for having my mentors. 0%. Right. I would have been knocked out of the game by buying these houses mm. because when you're on the market, I'm like, wow, look at this great deal. This yeah. is amazing. I mean, $40,000 is true. I know. It used to not be, though. Yeah. You know, it's crazy how much things have changed in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Um, But I wish I could have had the foresight to be able to hang on to them all. But yeah. that's what we're going to talk about in a future episode is like when to hang on. Okay when to sell, mm -hmm. you know, because there's ways that you can keep the house and get your money out as well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you that tip that I wish I had had because I'd be right. a gazillionaire right now because every house that I have done is now worth hundreds of thousands of dollars more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Number six, hit me. House in a flood zone. The reason is the flood insurance is a significant factor. It's a huge deterrent. On average, it's between 350 to $650 more per month. Mm. And I just ran the numbers with somebody last week and said, okay, even with today's interest rates, you know, what is a $300 additional mortgage payment? If you could have bought a $300,000 house, then just because the flood insurance, the cost per month, you could have bought a $400,000 house. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a difference in a $300,000 house and a $400,000 house when it comes to quality and location and all those things? Yeah, people are going to pick the $400,000 house. Okay. If I'm making the same payment, I might as well get the nicer house oh, out of it. Totally. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. So your house is going to sit there. Also, why put my stuff at risk and my kids at risk and all the stuff at risk of flooding yeah. and losing everything, all of our family memories, yeah. when I could just buy a nicer house for the same price? Now, you might make fun of me, and that's fair. I expect it. 
Yeah. But I only have a few rules of real estate. Yeah. One of mine is always buy a house on a hill. Yeah. For that reason. Yeah. Never down a hill. Yeah. Now, when you're talking about, you make a joke about Nashville. I don't know what the joke is. but something... Every single area that's flat is a flood zone. It's not a that's joke. A... <laughs> In Nashville, Tennessee, if it is flat at all, it's flood zone. Yeah. That's just how hilly we are mm -hmm. <laughs> and how mm -hmm. many rivers we have going through there, mm -hmm. which is just interesting. But, for, I mean, we have a relatively large fan base in Nashville. So yeah. that's a good pro hey, tip pro for some tip. people. There you go. And honestly, you're a little house on a hill. That's just an intuitive thing. You may not even have understood how wise that was yeah. because and you picked a big hill. Yeah. You picked a big hill this yeah. time. You're not playing around. Thanks. But uh, yeah, never go downhill. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily one of my nine, but mm -hmm. in people's subconscious, they always want to be up high. They never want to like go down into their house. Mm -hmm. so even if it's a dang couple steps. Whoa. It matters Whoa. a lot to your subconscious. That house just sits, 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 but not one of the nine. Mm. Not one of the nine. Do you have an opinion on the steepness of driveways? Because my driveway is pretty steep. It's a deterrent okay. for sure. You probably got a good deal on it. Oh, I mean, yeah. You did. <laughs> it's because that steep driveway. <laughs> it matters more in places that freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're... Uh, I mean, you're knocking out elderly, you're knocking out people who have certain types of cars mm -hmm. in places that freeze, especially everybody's going to say, dang, I'm going to have to walk up and down that hill in the cold mm -hmm. and it's going to be a problem. So, but again, you got a good deal. Why is this house available? You're like, Why is this so this, cheap? Because the hill is pretty steep. Yeah. I like it. All right. Yeah. Hit me. Number seven. Matters a little less in California. Yeah. Or like Arizona. Anywhere like it doesn't freeze. It doesn't yeah. freeze. Hmm. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Number seven, never buy a house less than a thousand square feet. Again. These are golden. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of, I mean, I've heard of obviously like train tracks, uh, highway. Those are, those are basic in the sense of I heard of them before, but this mm -hmm. one's new to me, Britt. Yeah. Well, children are a factor. You know, people want to be able to get all way. Now everybody works from home, but this has been a timeless one. Never buy anything less than a thousand square feet. Is it, again, it can it eventually work? Yeah, but it's really just harder. And so again, it's going to limit you on the three. You can't do three bedroom, two bath. Okay. A lot of times if your master is smaller than a 12 by 12, which is our next tip, mm -hmm. you're screwed. The master bedroom has got to be bigger than 12 by 12 or that house is just going to sit there. You're not going to be able to get a closet. I mean, I'm, I'm dumb. 12 by 12 feet? Yeah, 12 okay. by 12 feet. Got it. Yep. It's really hard to fit a king in there. Yeah. People in the master, they want a king. Yep. Can they settle for a queen? Yep. But they want a king. So sure. they're going to go find a house mm -hmm. that has a king. These are golden tips. You know. Well, now, with the, now, I know we're talking about flipping, but on number seven, don't buy a house less than a thousand square feet. Yeah. If it's a rental mm -hmm. or, or let me rephrase, maybe a short term rental, Airbnb, something that's quirky, kinky and fun. Mm -hmm. But that, that'd be okay though, right? Maybe. That's different. Again, okay. we're in the flipping yep. market right now. Totally. If you are trying to flip a house, got it. all these rules are different if you're doing other things. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. That was a great question. Great thing to point out. All right. Hit me with number eight. But again, will you ever want to sell that Airbnb? Mm, yep. Yeah, and point. is the buyer guaranteed to be somebody who Airbnbs? No. So Zero. even then, yeah. it's hard. My little PSTP is still almost 1,300 square feet. And I added a bedroom. Wow. Off the back. Okay. So I made it even bigger. I made it a 3-2. Sure. Smart. You know. Thank you. I'm full of it. <laughs> All right. Next one. A house that doesn't have any comparables, which means it's a weird house. Uh, okay. It's a funky shape. It's like the only mansion in the whole region. Uh oh. You know, it's like you cannot have this one off because it's going to be really hard to sell. People who buy mansions normally would be by other people who have mansions, mm -hmm. you know? I know, I know you're a mansion owner, which we're going to talk about, but are you surrounded by other mansions? Yeah. Yeah. If you're the only mansion surrounded by trailers, would that have been a deterrent? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Of course. So if it's some weird house, like the only A-frame or the mm. only dome. Oh, yeah. They're funky. They're yeah. cool Airbnbs, but they are going to sit there on the market. They're harder to sell. Because mm, yeah. the comps. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that Brittany throws out, throws out the mansion thing, you know, it's kind of funny, but I'll tell you guys the story. So at Abundance, I'm here talking about limiting beliefs, and mm -hmm. I shared one of my limiting beliefs. It wasn't a limiting belief specifically. It was just something I was unaware that was a limiting belief. But essentially, I had a friend tell me that I lived at a mansion. 
And I kind of brushed it off. I was like, ha, 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 pretty funny. Told my wife this joke that this guy told me. And she's like, well, yeah, babe, we do live in a mansion. And I, I said to her, we do? I mean, because in my mind, a mansion, like the definition of a mansion was like the White House, right? Tons of bedrooms everywhere. The big white pillars, the long driveway, the, the circle driveway with the fountain. Yeah, the fountain. Thing, right? Classic. Like the Buckingham Palace. Like that's yeah. what I thought a mansion was in my mind. And I Google it and turns out there's a definition for mansion. And a mansion is, and I know you know this, but for the ones who are listening, a mansion is any home that has five bedrooms or more and or 5,000 or more square feet. And I just kind of laughed. I was like, wow, I live in a mansion. Take the time to define things. This is so You live cool. in a mansion. Yeah. You do. Your house is massive. My goodness. Thanks. Yeah. It's it, beautiful too. It's super cool. But it, then Polly was like, oh, I live in a mansion. I live in a mansion. <laughs> I was it's like, a, I live in a mansion. We live in mansion. It was like so on fun. mansion. It was. It was just a cool like little. Love that. You know, little thing. But anyway, thanks for the shout out. <laughs> um, all right. And so no weird houses, no funky shapes. Yep. Got it. So last but not least. That was it. That was that it. That was nine. Oh, okay. I was all nine. Got it. Yeah. I only wrote down eight, so I missed one somewhere. I have to go back. Bedroom. 12 by 12. Oh, that was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Got, yeah. it, got it. Got it. Got it. That was the next one. So no, do not buy a house that does not have a 12 by 12 master A bedroom. minimum of 12 by 12. Whoa. Ideally bigger than that. Because they want a king. You can't fit a king in. You can, but there's like four inches on each side, yeah. so it's just a nightmare. Yeah, that is a re those are an amazing list of tips. That's going to be extremely helpful for anyone who is flipping a house. Yeah. You still think people should flip houses in this market right now? Of course, if the numbers work, right? There's always deals. Mm -hmm. There's always deals, and real estate is always hard. So it's either hard because the market is tanking, and there's a million houses on the market, and and your house is going to sit there too, and it's just taking longer to sell. But there's a million contractors available and nobody has work. It's just, uh, or it's hard because you can't find any deals and everybody's houses are flying off the market. They want too much for it and there's no contractors available. So it just pendulum swings yeah. from difficulty to difficulty. And both of those things happened in the last two years. Yeah. The ones you just mentioned. Yeah. And it's, it's just different. You know, sure. I used to be able to find like a million people to bid on one house. Now it's just hard to find anybody to bid on anything. And so, but again, it'll come back. Mm. Um, it'll come back that way. It'll come back that way. But you just have to be really good. You have to know your numbers. You have to find a mentor or you can lose a lot. I'm not telling you it's the only way, but I'm telling you that is a, a much safer way. And to hear the stories I've heard and to watch incredible people who have great hearts get knocked right out of the game and lose everything, and their family's money or their friend's money or yeah. their grandma's money, yeah. believing they got a good deal when they did not. And they didn't know how to handle the the contractors. They got walked all over. Yeah, It's just, it is not for the weak, but it can be done mm -hmm. and you will learn mm -hmm. and uh, you can save a lot of pain by having a mentor. I feel like, and this is just my opinion, tell me if I'm wrong or right, the one thing that is probably the most difficult or the one that's going to really get you is probably the whole contracting piece, God, right? Working parties. with the contractors, knowing the knowing those rehab budgets. You mentioned yeah. not getting walked on because I'm a soft guy. I'll just roll over. I'll just get walked right on top. Well, I'm just a woman too. And yeah. they're going to assume it, and not to say that in a demeaning way, ladies, but it's going to be harder for you because they haven't seen a lot of people who look like us mm -hmm. crush it in this field mm -hmm. or even try in this field. Mm -hmm. But you're a softie, huh? Oh, yeah. How'd that go? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just get walked <laughs> right over. Svet's amazing at it. She'll yeah. go in there and tell them what to do. Gosh, she's an eight. Paint the tub. She loves paint. She paints everything. <laughs> her, her solution to any flip is like, oh, just paint it. Paint it. Yeah. We've a lot painted, of money in painting. Yeah. We've painted all the things. But I feel like the contracting is probably the the most important piece to nail. Would you agree? Or uh, Buying it right is okay. number one most important thing always. Yep. That one for sure. Um, because that's the thing you can't change. Right. And then after that, it's learning how to manage that contractor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I've made my own contracts. They are rock solid, airtight, all sponsored by pain. They are both sided. They're on the contractor side and my side. Mm -hmm. And it's just all about how do we have a dummy proof, super clear agreement mm -hmm. so that we can remain working together in peace. And there's a document for everything. So yeah, that's the, my contract is probably the best thing I have. 
It's the way in which you even decide to work together. Do you sit down with the contractor and kind of go over Absolutely. that contract with them? Nobody reads anything. So I go through it with them and make sure, hey, this is how we're going to deal with changes, delays, all the stuff. I never just send anything off. If you want people to understand things, like go through it with them. Did it's, you sell those contracts? Uh, no, but I did just start coaching in real estate. I mean, I've had people beg me for decades, but I've had so many of my own projects. It's yeah. just never been something I felt convicted to lead. And I didn't want to get trapped in the corner of being a real estate girl, even though that was my path to wealth. Like, yeah. But lately I've, I have felt convicted. I'm like, I'm teaching everybody to be a force for good. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing to me. And real estate is not for everybody. Right. But all successful people invest in real estate and stocks and own businesses. Who am I to block these decades of information yeah. and pain that I know so much about yeah. from people? So I just opened that up literally like in the last couple of weeks that I am now coaching uh, real estate. But it's yeah. it's only been people who have come to the island that I've even told about it. So yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah. I mean, well, either yeah. way, I think that that's um, a very viable piece of information. Something that's going to be extremely helpful. It's scalable. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm all about extra streams of income. Well, one tip can make or save you $100,000. So, Brick, question. We have the list. It's gold. You're talking about one tip can save $100,000. But I feel like you got some more tips mm. to hit me with. When you're doing these flips, what are something, maybe items or, I don't know, other bonus things that you could add to a home that probably don't cost any extra money or a lot of extra money? We talked about decks, strong deck game. Strong deck game. What else can people do in their home that doesn't really cost that much? Oh, man, I've got a list. Okay. Well, everybody knows that the kitchens and the bathrooms are yeah. like, those are those are not like these yeah. fresh ideas I'm about to give you. But it's important, guys, if you didn't know to invest the money in the kitchens and the bathrooms mm -hmm. because that's what people say yes to. Yeah. But this is what people definitely devil say yes to. Okay. This is the difference between your house moving fast, your house sitting there on the market, people falling in love, people paying what you're asking. I think the best way to explain it is to give them this like dream life that they have a bunch of people, their friends coming over to enjoy and play games at their house. Yeah. So what does that look like? That looks like a really fun backyard. Mm -hmm. How do you make a fun backyard inexpensively? You get those restaurant lights. They're $60 from Costco, one box, and you hang them up and people gravitate to those mm. like a moth to a flame. Mm -hmm. They're like, wow, what's a play area. And I think that there's just like a, a lot of bars and restaurants that have those exact lights and people just associate that to like, this is fun. And it lights up your spaces. So hanging those lights is the least expensive, fastest way to get a house that's not moving to sell, get those nighttime pictures and to really show off your backyard. Mm -hmm. Number two is a fire pit. Outdoor okay. fire pit. Um, if outdoor you're, fire pit? Outdoor fire pit. Yeah. If you have a really high-end home, you probably want to put in a gas line and have a gas fire pit. If not, go to Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, get on Amazon and get one of those little wood-burning fire pits. People love it. Hmm. And then before you sell the house, have a stack of wood ready to go at the house. And your pictures, you've got to have pictures of that thing. Lights on at night, wood-burning cute couches. It's a big deal. This little dream backyard people have. Uh, mm. We talked about 100% return on your deck game in the neighborhoods that have any kind of view and or if you're towing the line with a war zone. I love rooftop decks mm. because uh, it's your dream outdoors but in a safe spot because mm -hmm. nobody can shoot you down, shoot, mm -hmm. shoot you up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the rooftop decks. I think all your houses have those. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got the idea from Charleston. Um, we had really tight okay. building guidelines in Nashville yeah. on, you know, width, depth, all those things. And so it was really hard to get these awesome decks mm -hmm. that we talked about. And so I would study historic houses that were cute. So I wasn't stuck with those tall, skinny, ugly things that people were building. So those rooftop decks, I'm going to make up a number because every house size is a sure, little different. Yeah. But let's say they cost an extra $25,000 to build. You'll get $100,000 out of those. The wow. house will go for another $100,000 because of a rooftop deck. People freaking love rooftop decks, especially when they've got lights and a fire pit. 
Now, if you're really uh, smart, when you're framing the house, you will make sure that it is able to hold a hot tub. And then you tell people that oh they can boy. they can crane a hot tub up there. Yeah. And they love that, especially if it's going to be an Airbnb for them. A hot tub on the roof is the difference between your Airbnb crushing it at life or just being another house on the market. But we're going to get into Airbnb tips later. All right. You want you want two more? Yeah, I do. Two more. Two more people. All right. So number one is adding a DADU, which is a, an acronym for Detached Accessory Dwelling Unit. Ooh. Anytime you can add more space. Those things cost like 10 grand to bring in. You can buy these. There's so many cool options online or okay. pre-built units. And if you can make it a bedroom, that's huge. Now, if you can make it an office, that's huge. If it's extra storage or recording studio, depending on your market, I've got both. I've got an extra bedroom and a recording studio on uh, one of my houses. 20 grand made the house worth another 150,000. Wild. Which is awesome. And I've had this Whoa. tested by several of my students and they're like, it was the difference between me selling my house and not because they bought a 2-1. Uh -uh. ah. So, all right, last one. <laughs> Pro tip of a lifetime is call it a bedroom. Anytime you can make something qualify as a bedroom, it's the smartest thing you can do. I made the game room in my new house I'm building in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Just have a little closet in it. Mm -hmm. Just added a closet. It's got the right window size and you can leave it. Got a Murphy bed in there. It's still the game room, but back yet, you can call it a bedroom. Even yeah. with this little dinky closet we use to hold games, it's a bedroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so if the next buyer wants to say it's a six bedroom, sure. five bathroom house, five and a half bathroom sure. house or whatever, they can. Is that the requirement for a bedroom is the closet? It's got to have a closet no and it way. needs to have, yeah, you cannot legally call it a bedroom sure. if it doesn't have a closet and if you can't get out the window through your body for fire reasons. Your body can't get out. If it's the window's too small or if uh -huh. it has no windows, you cannot call it a bedroom. Okay, got it. So window to escape and closet, you can call it a bedroom. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. These last three episodes, I feel like we're just bangers. Fire. I bet you got some more. Do we have any more in us? Mm. Let's find out. See you there. We've got lots of requests for coaching. If you want to be coached by myself or J Money Newsome in real estate, in stocks, in how to live fulfilling, abundant, purpose-filled lives, go to broketowoke.com and click sign me up.